Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCD1490.com, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton, alongside Rich Fisher. I'm Mike Samsel. Thanks so much for joining us here on WBCD1490.com. And it was an interesting week last week in Mercer County. I think the number one thing that we learned is Allentown is pretty good at football. Yeah, Allentown's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> they sure showed us something on Friday night at the game we were at. That was uh, that was just a dismantling of Opewell. And uh, they did it the Allentown way. They just ran, 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 ran. And, uh, you know, they, they look like they're starting to come around. And, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, that was quite a performance by the Redbirds. Yeah, it certainly was. Really impressive performance by the Redbirds. 52-17, I believe, was the margin of victory in that one. It was either 52-17 or 52-14. might have been 14. It was 14. Yeah, I don't remember a field goal. I probably should have written that down. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> Nottingham, 35. West Windsor Plainsboro North 17. Another game we had featured on the WBCD Sports Network. Well, I was at that game, and that was amazing to watch. Um, West Windsor had a 17-6 lead for most of the game. And yet you still had the feeling that Nottingham was going to come back. Now, God forbid I ever thought they were going to come back and outscore West Windsor 29 to nothing in the fourth quarter. That's just amazing. Um, but West Windsor North had chances in the first half. They, they were just missing receivers' hands that would have gone for big plays. They committed a boatload of penalties. And I think if North could have really built that lead up at halftime, they might have been able to take a little of the heart out of Nottingham, but they didn't. They were, you know, John Adams and uh, Deontay Nicholson, they all told me after the game they felt really in a good spot, only being down by 11 at halftime. They didn't score in the third quarter, but they began to move the ball, and then they just erupted in the fourth quarter. And West Windsor North has probably half the roster that Nottingham has. Right. So you knew they were going to get worn down. They had all their kids playing, almost all their kids playing both ways. Nottingham had almost all theirs going to platoon. And they really did get worn down at the end. Uh, I gotta tell you, West Windsor North is fun to watch. Yeah, uh, another good game didn't feature this one on the WBCB Sports Network, but Robbinsville, that program really starting to turn around. Good win over New Egypt, twenty to fourteen in overtime. Yeah, you know what, Mike? Every week, some team is coming up with a surprise victory, yeah. and this one was Robbinsville. They didn't disappoint this week. They beat twenty fourteen in overtime. New Egypt was homecoming night. New Egypt was three and zero, so they had a loss. Or they were undefeated. Kyle Twomley had an unbelievable game. You'll get to him on the 12th man players, yeah. but uh, he scored the winning touchdown, and then he and Dylan Scholl stopped New Egypt on their only possession in overtime. And, uh, you know, Kyle Fremo threw for 135 and rushed for 121 for New Egypt, but Robbinsville was able to make the big plays defensively when they had to, and the other two Twomley triplets, Jared and Taylor, they hooked up for Heightstown's only other touchdown of the game, or Robbinsville's only other touchdown of the game, so... Lawrenceville 16, Princeton 7. Lawrenceville, after the loss from Ewing, the lone undefeated team standing in Mercer County. Actually, I think Lawrence is also undefeated. Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence, I'm not sure. A tradition the... unlike any other. <laughs> yes. Me messing up some school. Ewington and Lawrenceville, big game this weekend. And me calling you on it. <laughs> yeah, with Ewing getting beaten by Willingboro, the Cardinals are the only undefeated left. So I guess uh, the 72 Dolphins will be... Driving a bottle of champagne to whoever beats Lawrence this year is the last undefeated. They struggled against Princeton 16-7, to but they also didn't have Davion Hemingway. They kept him out because of an injury. Mm -hmm. um, and yet still, even without Hemingway, they had six guys combined to rush for uh, 200 yards. So Lawrence is more than just a couple guys. Yeah, it certainly is. It's a good football team in Lawrence. They're going to be one of... Uh, three games that we have featured on the WBCB Sports Network this weekend. Lawrence and Ewing will be on 1490 AM and video streamed at WBCB1490.com, beginning with the Trentonian pregame show at 1145 on our website, WBCB1490.com. On Saturday, over on 107.7 FM and 1077thebronc.com, Trenton takes on Notre Dame. And also this weekend, Friday night, Heightstown hosts Hamilton hear that game on 1077 The Bronx and 1077thebronc.com. When we come back here on the Mercer County Football Show, we'll take a look at our players and teams of the week. You're watching the Mercer County Football Show presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Merrill Reese, here to tell you about my good friends at Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township. For outstanding sales and service, you can depend on the folks at Haldeman Ford Subaru for the best value on new and pre-owned Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs, along with a great selection of value-priced new and pre-owned Subarus. 
and no one offers the service that Haldeman does in their huge, state-of-the-art service facility. Service so great that many area municipalities and commercial fleets get their service performed by Haldeman Ford Subaru. From Langhorne to Princeton, folks like you to commercial fleets trust the name Haldeman for sales and service. Haldeman Ford Subaru, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCB1490.com alongside Rich Fisher, I'm Mike Samsel. So happy to have you along with us and let's get into our players and teams of the week. First we'll start with the honorees from the 12th Man Touchdown Club this week. Offensive back of the week is a young man that you saw this weekend, Deontay Nicholson, the freshman from Nottingham. 21 carries, 206 yards and a touchdown. One heck of a performance. Yeah, remember that name. He's only a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> Four more years, or at least three more years, his, that could come. In. His teammates are already touting him a Division One player. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Matrum, the defensive or offensive lineman of the week, lead blocker for a team that rushed for, oh, 406 yards this past week. Uh, Kyle Twomley is the defensive back of the week because he did everything. Yeah, on offense and defense. Yeah. But when you're getting the defensive back of the week, they only uh, just say what you did defensively. They also rush for over 100 yards. 17 tackles, recovered a fumble that set up Allen t or Robbinsville's first score of the game. And uh, also, as you said, had a very good offensive performance as well. Defensive lineman of the week is Chris Fake from the Hunt School. Nine tackles, two and a half sacks, four tackles for loss. As Hun, we don't get into the prep schools very often, but they defeated the number two ranked team in Washington D.C. So that's a good victory the for Hunt. Hun. Yeah, we don't ever really talk about the preps, but Hun is just a powerhouse. They can't get teams to play them because they're so good. So they're right. driving down to Washington, and we see that fake is the real thing. <laughs> I couldn't let that go. You've by. been working on that for a while. Yeah, you? yeah. <laughs> Everyone's turning off their computers now. <laughs> <laughs> Axel Flores from Heightstown, Special Teams Player of the Week, 240 punting yards. 48, 57, 50, and 34 was the bad one uh, on a bad snap. <laughs> Had a 57-yard punt as well. And uh, it was a losing effort for Heightstown last week, but he was their overall player of the week last week. Had a very good Special Teams Day. So those are the 12th man touchdown club honorees, but even more more coveted, uh, coveted, <laughs> prestigious than the 12th Man Touchdown Club. Our, ours. The Fish Samsel <laughs> <laughs> Players of the Week. So I'll let you go first. All right. Well, the Fish version of this is I am going, we going to Player of the Week first? Sure, let's go of Player of the Week first. I'm going to go with, his stats weren't prolific, but I'm going to go with Nottingham quarterback Deontay West, who really gutted it out with this team. He scored two touchdowns on the ground, threw for a big touchdown pass to get his team back in the game, mm -hmm. and then scored on a two-point conversion to make it 17-14 and make it a, a field goal game. And Deontay West did what a quarterback has to do. He rallied his team, he kept them together, and he got things going. And uh, like I said, the stats weren't brilliant, but three touchdowns isn't too shabby. So uh, congratulations to Deontay West. And I'm going to go with Joe Menino, who was fantastic in Allentown's victory over Hopewell Valley on Friday night. Had 179 rushing yards, three touchdowns, and a 52-14 victory. And as we said, 406 yards rushing for Allentown against Hopewell Valley. So a hugely impressive performance from Jay Graber's team. On to the team of the week. The team of the week. I am going to go with those Robbinsville Ravens. I think uh, beating New Egypt, an undefeated team, that's a pretty good feather in their cap. Uh, I don't think many people were expecting that. And the Robbinsville raised their record to two and two. Uh, got a good game by their defense. Got a win. Got grinded it out in the overtime. So congratulations to the Ravens. And I'm going to stick with the theme of black and red and pick the Allentown Redbirds as my team of the week. Just a hugely impressive win over Hopewell Valley. Hopewell Valley struggling a little bit this year, but when you have over 400 yards rushing, in fact, I'm making this a rule right now. You get over 400 yards rushing as a team. Automatic. You're my team of the week. Unless you lose. Um, no, even if you lose, if well, you get 400 yards rushing. Well, what happens ahead. if you give up 500 yards rushing, and then <laughs> then you're just the offense of the week. And then you're the offense of the week. Fine. I don't have time for your loopholes. we got to keep the show moving. We'll be back with more after this here on the Mercer County Football Show. <laughs> when I had my stroke, I didn't know what was happening. I was at work and got confused. Suddenly, I was dizzy. I remember dropping my purse and I couldn't even tell anybody what was wrong. But fortunately, 911 took me to St. Francis Medical Center. I got the treatment I needed fast from a team of doctors 
who really cared about me. And today, I'm back at work. On Hamilton Avenue in Trenton, St. Francis Medical Center is a state-of-the-art hospital with recognized centers of care. In Mercer County, St. Francis has the state's first accredited stroke center and only state-recognized regional cardiac center. When you need to choose a hospital, St. Francis may be your best choice. St. Francis, advanced medical treatment with a personal touch. Be well. On the web at stfrancismedical.com. Hello, this is Acting Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Onerfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County teams the best of luck, and I would also like to urge parents to be involved in your children's activities. Urge them to participate in after-school activities, whether it's on the athletic field or in the school play or marching band. Participation in these programs is a great learning experience for your child. Parents, please stay involved. This is your Acting Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Onerfree, and I hope you enjoy Enjoy Welcome today's back to the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCD1490.com, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. That's Rich. I'm Mike. Thanks so much for joining us here for this week's edition. And we'll start off with our games on Friday night for the preview section of the show. Game we'll have for you on the WBCD Sports Network on 107.7 FM and 107.7thebronc.com features Hamilton at Heightstown. Two teams looking for their first Valley Division victory of the season. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'll be spending all day in Heightstown. I'll be at the Hall of Fame luncheon, then the soccer game, and then the football game. It is. It's Hall of Fame night at Heightstown. They're going to honor their uh, this year's Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. But I think Ethan Jaros is a little more worried about this year's team, and they're coming off a 40 to nothing loss in the Burlington, uh, the Burlington Township in which they allow the season high in points. Um, Hamilton's coming off a bye week, and I, they, they might have needed it because they really suffered a heartbreaker when they lost to West Windsor South 29-28 and missed a game-winning field goal with, uh, from the 27-yard out, out, 27 yards out. Uh, Allen had a week to get themselves back together. They're hungry. Uh, I doubt they're going to look past the winless Rams. They're 1-2, and 0-2. Oh Hudson's 0-4, 0-2. Nottingham is also in action as they take on West Windsor Plainsboro South on Friday night, and that should be an interesting game as well. West Windsor Plainsboro South getting their first victory over Hamilton a couple of weeks ago, but Nottingham is starting to develop the reputation of that team that just kind of hangs around. They're in all their games, yep. and uh, they're winning most of them. Well, yeah, I mean, they've come back twice now against Hopewell. They were down by a few, and they were obviously they were down this past week to West Windsor North. They've shown a lot of resiliency. They really don't want to have to do that this weekend. They're playing a West Windsor South team that's coming off a 35 nothing loss to Ocean City. They, you know, they upset Hamilton, but then they lost 35 nothing. Nottingham, what they want to do is they want to get out, they want to take control of this game and not have to worry about making any kind of comeback. So we'll see if the North Stars can do that. Pemberton's going to have an interesting game on Friday night. They take on Allentown, and this is a Pemberton team that's looking to establish itself. Yeah, I mean, they're 3-1, and one, and they're 2-0 and oh in the Patriot division. Allentown's 3-2, and 2-0 two, two oh in the Patriot. But that 3-1 and one is a little misleading. They have three wins, but the combined record of those teams is 2-9. and nine. Uh, The only team they played with a winning record was Ewing, and they lost that game. Uh, last week we saw Allentown completely dominate the game. Joey Menino ran wild. Menino told me after the game that the offensive line is relatively new and they're starting to come together. And if that's the case, Allentown's only going to get better and better. So uh, you could, you might want to be a little wary of them. And the winner of this one takes undisputed possession of first place in the Patriot Division. That should be a really good game coming up on Friday night. Another game, Northern Burlington is taking on West Windsor Plainsboro North. This is a good chance for West Windsor Plainsboro North to get back on track after a loss. Burlington 0-4 on the season. Northern Burlington, that is, 0-4, 0-2 in the Patriot Division. And West Windsor Plainsboro North, with a win here, could jump out to 2-1 in Division. Yeah, North is 2-2, 1-1. Two and two, one and, one, and uh, it was funny, after the game, the... Uh, Nottingham coach John Adams said to me, Murphy's a senior, right, talking about their quarterback, Brian Murphy. And I said, no, he's a, he's a junior. And Adams literally just went, no! <laughs> he didn't want to hear that he's going to have to face Brian Murphy again because Murph really, he's impressive. I mean, he not only can throw the ball, but he his legs, he keeps he extends plays so much. And the North Stars are getting so frustrated chasing him around. <laughs> and, uh you know, so uh, it, it's North has a they have a good offense, and John Owens we know him as a receiver. Boy, what a great defensive game he had last week against Nottingham. He was in that backfield all the time, recovered a fumble. I think he had an interception. So uh, they have some really good players. They're, like I said, they're a fun team to watch. Yeah, they really are. That'll be a good game 
against Northern Burlington. Also on Friday night, Robbinsville, congratulations on knocking off undefeated New Egypt. Your prize is undefeated Cinnamons in this week. Yeah, who, 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 who did they get mad at? <laughs> who did they get mad at them? Uh, they knock off one undefeated, they get another one, and this is a really, this is a whole different deal than New Egypt. Cinnamons in this year is 4-0. They've outscored four opponents 154 to 32. Oof. They scored 50 points in two games, and in the games they didn't score 50, they shut out the opponents in that game. They've been 25 and six the previous three seasons coming into this year. It's a it's a solid program. I mean, obviously Robbinsville's feeling pretty good about himself after last week, but they really got to step up their play this week because they're really stepping up against the competition as well. Friday night as well, Burlington Township is at Hopewell Valley. Hopewell Valley one and three on the season and looking to bounce back after the tough loss against Allentown. Yeah, that was one of, really one of their worst losses since they brought the program back in 2005. Uh, and it doesn't get any easier. I mean, yeah. Burlington Township, in their three wins, they've outscored their opponents 102-3. to three. Uh, You go by common opponents. Hopewell beat Notre Dame 24-20. Township beat Notre Dame 40 to nothing. So, just going by common opponents, uh, Hopewell's got a tough challenge ahead of himself this week. Yeah, they certainly do. It's a good slate on Saturday. Another game we'll have for you on the WBCB Sports Network, beginning with the Trentonian pregame show at 11.45. Sean Lerman, Sean Miller, and Bill Redner will have the call <laughs> Bill Redner. as Ewing takes on Lawrence. That game over at Notre Dame, 12 o'clock kickoff, 11.45 pregame show, 3-1 and one against 4-0. and oh. This is a good game. Yeah, both teams 2-0 and oh in the Valley Division, so the winner is undisputed and you know, a leader in, for, uh, in the Valley. I, it's kind of weird. It's homecoming for, Notre, for Lawrence, yeah. but it's at Notre Dame because they're getting turf put in their field. So they can't have their homecoming at home, but at least they're having it in their home township. So that's one thing. Um, this game lost a little bit of luster when Ewing lost because it would have been two undefeated. But it's still going to be a really good game. Maybe even still the game of the year in, in Mercer County. We'll see. Um, we're assuming Hemingway's coming back. They sat him out last week for precautionary reasons. And with Miles Mitchell White... He ran for 106 yards on just six carries last week, so he, you have two explosive weapons that, that Ewing has to deal with. And as we say every week, Damian Doggett, he's, he's somebody that you have to figure out if you're on defense. Uh, in their 27-17 loss, Doggett threw for 205 yards, mm -hmm. but they limited him to 24 yards on the ground. So I think, Mike, without still having to see Ewing, if you can stop him from doing one thing or the other, maybe you have a shot at beating him. If he's going to go off and rush for over 150 and throw for over 200, then yeah. you're in trouble. But if you can take one or the other away from them, then, uh, then maybe you have a shot. <laughs> Easier said than done, right. as I well, said. Yeah. I saw that Ewing Nottingham at least the second half of that game, and the Damian Doggett is just incredible to watch. Uh, another game we'll have for you on the WBCD Sports Network over on 107.7 FM and 107.7 thebronxcom Remember the old Gorilla Monsoon line, the irresistible force meets the immovable object? Well, this is the resistible force against the movable object. This Notre Dame takes on Trenton. I'm kidding. Uh, but both teams looking for their first Capital Division win yeah. of the season. Yeah, that's how it's been. I mean, the, but something's got to give here. They're both coming into this game with a four-game losing streak after Trenton won their first game of the year over Palumbo. Um, difference is Trenton's been in their games. Right, I mean, they've right. been killing themselves with mistakes. Last week they lost to undefeated Cherry Hill West. They had a 12 nothing lead, uh, and they passed for 119 yards, but they only rushed for minus three, and they killed themselves with penalties, which is what Trenton used to do before they went on this little run of qualifying for the States. Now they're doing it again. If they can cut out the mistakes, they're going to win a few games. Now Notre Dame, they're 0-4. They lost to Paul the 6, 24-6. They got a good game from Cortez Williams. He rushed for 115 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but Notre Dame, I mean, Notre Dame, what Notre Dame has to hope for is that Trenton keeps making mistakes and they can cap. But then you have to capitalize on the mistakes. You know, you can't just say, "Well, we'll make mistakes." You know, you got to capitalize. And if Notre Dame can do that, it'll be interesting to watch Robbie Buecher against his Trenton defense. Buecher's yeah. pretty mobile. Trenton's very fast, so, you know, whether they can chase him down or not. I think it's going to be a, a close, exciting game. I do, too. These are two teams with a lot of talent. One's young, and the other one is, you know, working on their discipline. Right. If, you know, this young team all of a sudden gets some games under their belt and they get some experience, or if Trenton can stop the penalties and things of that nature, both of them have a chance to be pretty good. So we'll see that game on Saturday. You can hear it on 107.7 FM and 107.7 LeBron.com. Princeton takes on Steinert. This game 1-3, and three. Princeton 1-2 and two is Steinert. Steinert looking to get back on track. Yeah, actually, Princeton 1-3, and 0-2. Oh 
Steiner at one and two, one and one in the Patriots. Uh, but it is going to be an interesting game. You know, Princeton's teams seem to give Steiner teams problems in every sport, baseball, yeah. everything. Um, now, Princeton's coming off a really strong effort against Lawrence. Granted, they didn't have Hemingway, but they still have a good team, and Princeton held them to, you know, help stay close. Um, Steiner's had two weeks off to recover from blowing a 15-point lead to Pemberton, so that probably helped, too, not having uh, to come right back after that. Obviously, the Spartans will come in a little more rested, a little more healthy. You know, getting that extra week off helps. they got to be wary of Vince Duran, who threw for 174 yards and a touchdown against Lawrence. Um, once again, though, the Little Tigers didn't have a running game, and that's you got to get that running game sooner or later. Um, Steiner's going to do what they always do. They're going to try to mix it up. they got Jankowicz throwing the ball. they got Jordan Myers from running the ball. Um, I think this is going to be another one. Uh, I think it's going to be a close down to the wire game, and it should be entertaining. Yeah, it should definitely be an entertaining game as Princeton takes on Steiner. Go ahead, flip the page. I need the next note. Got nothing, buddy. Oh, got nothing. We're, We're done. Out. There you go. <laughs> wow, bad a show for me this week. Ah. Uh. Always. <laughs> Say goodbye. Yeah, let's get out of here. That's Rich. I'm Mike. Get See you next the week. St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. We'll be back next week.